Welcome to Trailhead DX. Uh, my name is Luis Campos, and the name of this talk is Everything You Need to Know on Apex Debuggers. So, um, first things first, forward looking statement. If I show something that hasn't been released, don't make purchasing decisions on that. Make purchasing decisions based on things that have been released already. So, as I said, my name is Luis, and I'm part of the Platform Developer Tools team. And we're, in, we're responsible for shipping the, the Salesforce extensions for VS Code. So this means all the functionality that you get for coding Apex, Lightning, LWC, Visual Force, all of the coding experience on the extensions, that's what we're responsible on. And uh, specifically to Apex, because this is an Apex talk, we divide the functionality in the extensions into these three categories. Coding, which is basically getting code completion, code navigation, the refactoring functionalities, uh, the testing capabilities, which is basically running your test, getting uh, the code coverage, being able to highlight the lines that have code coverage and the ones that don't. And the last section is debugging. So being able to run the debuggers in order for you to uh, debug any issue with your Apex code. And this is what I'm gonna focus on in this talk. So um, I know that I've mentioned Apex. Uh, for those of you who have just started using the platform, Apex is the object-oriented language from Salesforce. It shares some functionalities and features similar to other languages like Java, C Sharp, and PL SQL. And it complements really nicely the other languages that we have in the platform like LWC, Lightning, Visual Force, other features like Flow, Chatbots. So it's kind of like the glue. Like this is kind of like the interface between your UI and your data uh, in the org. And the language has been available since the winter 2027 20, uh, um, release. Well, so it's been, it's been here for a while. So for those of you who have coded Apex since it's in, in, in the early days, this is gonna be, be very familiar for you. This is how like at the beginning we used to debug where the debugging capabilities of the language were very limited and you, you were very used to seeing code that had a bunch of system debug lines. And this was because you would ship it to production, something would happen, and in order to debug it, you would turn on the Apex debug logs and then uh, execute the code and then manually go through the log lines and try to figure out like where in the, in the piece of my Apex code did this thing fail, and then try to fix it. Uh, uh, the good thing is that this is not the debugger that I'm showing today. So this is old stuff, and um, the new stuff, are, it's pretty cool, it's very modern. So in order for me to, to showcase the debuggers, what I'll do is I'll walk you through a small piece of code that I wrote in Apex. So there's a UI that accepts a JSON file, sorry, uh, a JSON string. And what my Apex code does, it's, it, it parses it, and it tries to create, out of the data on the JSON um, structure, it creates two records, a parent and a child. And then it saves it into a couple of custom objects that I have. So um, I have this app, and I gave it to a friend of mine, and he broke it. He basically told me, like, hey, I entered this piece of data, and I got a, uh, you're referencing a no object exception. So if I go to the org, and I take the data that my friend gave me, and I put it into my interface, um, and I try to load it, I see the error here. So somewhere in my code, I'm referencing a null value, and basically my code is blowing up. So what I'll do is I'll bring up the extensions, and I open my project. The first thing that I want to show you is this debug view. So this is where you access the debuggers. And at the top uh, of, of this, is there's a pick list, and it shows me two options, launch Apex debugger and replay debugger. The first thing that I'm going to demo is the interactive debugger, which is the first option. And this is configuration that comes uh, out of the box with the extensions. So for example, in this one, I could, I could add more data to the launching configuration to filter some of the requests that I'm going to get. But for now, this is OK. So the first thing that I do is I launch and I open the, the interactive debugger. This is actually communicating to my org. And the way that it works is think about it as a stream of events. Every single time that you execute Apex, there's a stream of events, and you're subscribing to it. And then when you add breakpoints to the session, you're basically saying, Look, whenever you catch this event, stop the execution, and give me all of the values so I can start looking at the Apex code that I'm debugging. So 
with this apex code, let's 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 just uh, imagine that I don't exactly know where it's failing. But the good thing is that I coded my code in a way that every single time that there's an error, I trigger an exception. In this case, I, I'm triggering a custom exception. So what I can do with the interactive debugger is I can configure it to just break into any of the custom exceptions that I added to my code. So I do it this way. Um, I go to the command palette. I select the Apex debug configuration exceptions command. And then out of the, all of the exceptions that the Apex language has, it also allows me to see the custom exceptions that I added to my code. So I'll basically just tell the, the debugger to break on any of the exceptions and see if, um, and see if, we, if I re-execute the code, it stops there. So I go back to the screen. I start executing my code. And then at that point in time, the debugger got this event. And since I'm stopping in all the exceptions, it catched it uh, in this piece of code, and it opened it for me. So I'm going to close this. I know that it's failing, and I'm, I'm going to unpause the execution of the debugger. And I know that my code is failing somewhere here in this method. This method's called uh, init data. So what I'll do now is I'll start uh, adding breakpoints to my code in order for me to stop the execution, start inspecting where in this uh, method is the exception happening. So what I'll do it is I'll add a couple of breakpoints here before I insert the data. That's cool. I go back to the browser. And if I re-execute the code, I'll see that I now stop in the first breakpoint that I added on my, on my method, which is line 16. In this piece of code, uh, what I'm doing is I'm, ba I'm basically deserializing uh, the input that I got from the, from the UI. So I'll just keep uh, executing the code to see if the failure was there. It wasn't. And now this line, what it's doing is basically taking the parsing of that data that I did, and then it's trying to get some of the specific data inside of it. Now, the interesting thing about this line is that I'm calling a method and I'm passing a couple of, of pieces of data to it. I didn't add a breakpoint to that method, but with the, uh, with the interactive debugger, what I can do is I can step in into that method and see what that method is doing. You see? So um, what I can start looking at is the data that I sent to it. So in the left side of, of the screen, you'll see that I, I sent a, a map that I called O. And I can start looking at, uh, at the values uh, on it. And this is the call stack. Let me close it. See the data that I can uh, start looking into. I can step over this execution. And I see that the value that I was looking for was actually part of a map, and I'll return it as a list. So I'll continue my execution. And this should stop in the next line. So at this point, I should have generated uh, a piece of data that I'm going to try and, and save in, uh, in my org as a custom object. And this is basically this map of, of rules. I call them rules, which is basically the parent object that I'm trying to, or the parent record that I'm trying to create. Uh, here's all the data that I'm going to create here. So I'll continue the execution. And it turns out that the issue is not with creating the first piece of data. It's not the, the, the issue is not with creating the parent record uh, out of the JSON uh, string. So what I'll do is I can basically uh, assume that the issue is somewhere here in this for loop. If I continue the execution, I'm just stepping through every single line because I'm basically just creating um, data structures. I'm parsing data. And then this piece of, of code, what I'm doing is I have a map, and I'm looking for a very specific uh, key value on it. So if I step over this, something that I see here is that that value that I was looking for is not existent in my map. So it's actually the null that's causing all of these issues. If I, keep, uh, if I continue executing the code, and I step through this, I'll end up in the exception code. So effectively, I've already found the issue in my code. This is how you debug with the interactive debugger. So I'm done with this. Uh, I now have to code a solution for this, but I won't do it here, because this, se this session is not about coding a solution on the bug. This is about debugging. This is how the interactive debugger works. Now, since I'm done with it, um, 
I'll stop the execution the, of the interactive debugger. And what I'll show you now is I'll show you the replay debugger. Now, one thing very important to uh, that I didn't mention initially in the, in the interactive debugger is that it requires you to purchase an additional license. But the replay debugger doesn't. The replay debugger, the only thing that you need to, to have is API access and being able to generate Apex debug logs. So if I wanted to do the same type of debugging with the replay debugger, the first thing that I do is I need to turn it on. I could, I could do that by um, going to the command palette and typing turn on Apex replay debugger. What, it's, what this thing is doing right now is it's basically communicating back to the org, creating a trace flag with certain debugging levels, and these are specific to the, to the user that I'm connected with. So at this point, I'm effectively being able to track all of the Apex executions that my user is gonna be doing, okay? Um, the next thing that I'll do is I'll go back to the org, whoops, the error. I'll reload the screen, and I'll take the data that was causing the issue, and I'll rerun it. So the difference with the interactive debugger is that the APIS execution didn't pause. And this is because I'm basically just recording all of the executions as Apex debug logs. So if I go back to my VS code, what I'll do is I'll, I'll download that debug log that, that has all of the data that I want to debug with. So I'll download the latest one that I created. This, this is the file. And there's two ways to start the, the debugger once you have the log file on VS Code. You could either right click on the log file and launch the debugger, or you could launch it from um, the left side navigation, the debugger view, click play, and select the file that you just downloaded. So I'll do this for now. Uh, once it starts, you again get the debugger controls so that you can pause, continue, step in, step out, uh, step over, reload uh, the, the debugger session, all of the same controls. So what I'll do here is that the, with the, with the uh, uh, replay debugger, you kind of like have to have a notion of where in the code you want to step through and add the, the breakpoints there. So I kind of know already in my app that this is the code that parses the, the JSON input. So again, I'll just add similar uh, breakpoints to this. So I'll add one here. I'll add one uh, when I'm parsing the data structure before the for loop and on line 60, which is before inserting the childs. So if I continue the, the execution of the log, this is basically going through the debug log file and parsing all of the data and matching it to the lines of code that you have locally in your project. Uh, as you can see, I'm not communicating at this point with the org anymore. I'm just working with the log file. And I get, I get similar data in the left side navigation. So if I continue the execution, I step into this uh, method. And same with the interactive debugger. I can step into, all, into other methods, in, even if I don't have breakpoints on it. I can step over. I can see some of the data that gets generated. I can continue the execution. I get more data. And then once I get here, this is something that I, that I wanted to point out. These, all of the data in the left side is being fetched by, from, from the log file. So if you've seen the log file before, whenever you're, you're going through um, big piece of, of data like uh, lists or maps, it normally tells you like, this is too long to log. So that's totally fine. We wouldn't be, be logging every piece of data in the debug log because that would just make the log file enormous and kind of useless for you. But a way around to this is this functionality called, um, so I'll, I'll basically stop the execution. I need more data at this point. I realize that because I'm working with maps and lists. And the way to get uh, over this is with this uh, type of breakpoint that we call checkpoint. So I add the checkpoint here, and as you can see, this, this red dot has a couple of, of, of lines on it, which is basically the way that we uh, differentiate between a, a normal breakpoint and a checkpoint. And what I need to do is I need to tell the org, like, hey, whenever the apex execution happens in this line, 
create this additional piece of data and put the reference to the debug log file so I can get that additional data that I'm looking for. What I'll do is I'll, I'll now do this. I'll, I'll update the org, letting, it, letting the org know that I just added some checkpoints and I need more data on it. So this means that I need a new file because I, I, I need more references. So I go back to the org, I re-execute my code, and then I go back to VS Code and uh, I download the latest log that was generated. So I get this one. Very similar piece of file. So I'll start by right clicking on it. And now I'll continue the execution. I know that the issue is not here. So this is important. At this point in time, this is before having the, the additional uh, checkpoint. So I still see the too large to display message on certain variables. But once I get here, now I have all of the data, all of that rich data from maps and lists, all of the data that I didn't want to add uh, directly into the log file, I can now access it because I have the reference in the log file for that. And likewise, like I can expand my map, I can see all of the values that are there and stuff like that. So this is how you use the replay debugger. Um, and at this point in time, I already know that my bug is here in this line, so I'll just code the, the solution later. So going back to, to the slides, just a quick recap. So the interactive debugger is a real-time debugger. You're basically pausing Apex executions. It requires an additional license. Um, you can configure exceptions to listen to a specific exceptions. You can do breakpoints. You can step over, step in, step out, pause the execution, restart it. And you can also filter the events by user, by endpoint, or uh, by request type. And then for the replay debugger, you don't need an additional license. It's available on every org. Uh, it uses the Apex debug log files. So as long as you can generate Apex debug logs, you can use the replay debugger. You can do the same thing. You can do breakpoints, step over, step in, step out, pause, and you have checkpoints for those scenarios where you're dealing with uh, large pieces of data and you want more granularity over it. Um, and with that, last thing is I'll, I'll give you a couple of links. So the first one is a documentation site for the VS Code extensions. So if you have any questions regarding setup, regarding how to use uh, the debuggers, how to use any other extension, all the documentation is here. And the other one is the link for the uh, Salesforce extensions for VS Code repository. So these extensions are, are developed uh, open source. So if you run into any issues, if you have any ideas, some features that we should add, this is the right place to go. You can open a GitHub issue and you'll have direct communication with us, with the team that's developing it. Um, and last, uh, these are a couple of recommended sessions, in my opinion. Uh, the data sheet is pretty cool. So everything related to the X, you'll learn it. Um, modern JavaScript features. This is very cool one. So uh, these guys will expand the, the best practices building with VS Code. So these guys will expand on how to use the Salesforce extensions for VS Code for everything. Apex, LWC, uh, Lightning. This is going to be a good one. Like if you miss it, like I don't know why you paid for this ticket. Um, and then this one, uh, coding with Sane and Rene. This is also awesome. Like these guys will walk you through how they develop uh, side by side using the extensions, coding with uh, LWDC and the latest features on the platform. And uh, I actually have one minute for questions. That's cool. Thank you. Thank you.